Tired of dealing with governments? Wish there was a better way of not getting busted committing victimless crimes? Tired of having to listen to your parole officer? Never again with the Bipcot NoGov Human License Wristband. This wristband has a NoGov patented NoGov hologram technologies that work on your aura chakras to fungus shui vibrational energy something something to woo state agents off of your trail. It's like they can't even see you. The best part is it actually works. It doesn't actually work. It's so easy to use. Just put it on your wrist or within three inches of your quantum sacred geometry spirit energy and commit all of the victimless crimes you want and totally get away with all of them. And by all, we mean none. And with the fancy Lowbirds podcast logo on the side, you'll be the life of Porkfest. And all of this could be yours for $4.99 plus $2 shipping and handling. These statements have not been evaluated by the FDA, FTC, or any other three letters. This product is not intended to prevent, defend, or protect you from any legal action from the state. This product contains chemicals known in the state of California to cause cancer and birth defects or other reproductive harm. Move to New Hampshire, Nevada, or anywhere else that isn't a shithole and you'll probably be fine. These bands are total bullshit. They don't actually work. If this needs to be said to you, you should probably drink bleach. This is just neat looking merchandise that can start an interesting conversation with yet to be libertarians. Order today at lulberts.com. Lulberts, that's our word, brought to you by Bipcot and Fiend Phone. I don't even know anymore. <laughs> we got Nick Hazleton from the Anarcho Yakalist and Yak and dash yak.com, right? Yeah. yeah. Alright, so just hop into it. Uh, we'll just get around. So there was a there was a couple things that happened uh, since we last did the podcast. We're, I'm gonna release this today, so yeah, we'll do a flag next week. <laughs> we get the wait a little. <laughs> By the way, they still haven't put the uh, tread lightly flag on uh, Black Block. I need to remind him. I think he forgot because he was out on vacation. Uh, so yeah. So the LP debates uh, or the LP nomination and some stuff that's been happening around that. Uh, you said you went to a debate. Why don't you talk about that? <laughs> yeah, it was a while ago. So it was. Uh... <laughs> yeah, I didn't talk about it at all. I don't think. I mean, I I put out. I wanted to get some questions for people on Facebook. But uh, I, I got a bunch of really clever ones from all my anarchist buddies. Uh, but I didn't get to see them because uh, the I couldn't get Wi-Fi where I was at. And it really sucked. But uh, I got to I was I was actually helping out for the debate. I ran the lights. You know I don't know if anybody knows what that means, but there's you, I guess during the debate, they uh, the moderators will have lights right in front of the candidates. So it's green, then they're good at talking, and then when the red light flips on, it means they have like so many seconds. Oh, okay. So I was doing that to tell them when to stop. And it was Austin Peterson and, and Gary Johnson. Um, I think it was Hillsboro, Oregon. Uh, the Libertarian Party of Oregon uh, had them out there. And, and so I just watched it, and I ran the lights, and I didn't get to ask any questions. But I got to talk to Austin Peterson a I'm, few oh, times. I'm so sorry. And by the way, you probably did, it didn't sound like you did a very good job running those lights because you let them talk. So anyway. <laughs> <laughs> and he's uh he, he was interesting i didn't get to talk to gary johnson i met him and he was friendly and, and austin peterson came high. off as very friendly too he probably <laughs> was <laughs> but he was it was interesting i guess i mean austin peterson is much well more well spoken than johnson is well and uh, he was much more impressive but it, he's just very charismatic, almost to a point where it's like, I don't Creepy. know. Yeah, it's a little bit weird. Yeah, you don't you don't want your politicians to be a little too articulate because then you're just like, okay, this is <laughs> this is scary it's territory. Just weird. Uh -huh. <laughs> like now you're just lying to me. Well, they're all lying to you, but you know you want them to be a little bit more subtle about it, like or at least kind of like. <laughs> lull you into a sense of like okay I, I can accept this a little bit you know they're just, they sound like someone i know they're stumbling every once in a while just like a normal person would but if someone's just talking articulately too long it's just like okay this guy's lying to me <laughs> yep so uh what were your what, what were your thoughts about the candidates um not that we care now that it's over or even care about <laughs> sure. the lp but um i i don't like johnson Really, I I just have come to really dislike him. I don't think he's really a libertarian. I think that he's probably got a the best chance of any candidate that the um, LP put up that would have been able to attract any other, you know, attract more people to the party and get more votes than any of the other ones. Well, he's libertarian-ish. Um, ish you right know? yeah like a lot of these He's, like justin amash and Rand paul they're not libertarian right they're libertarian ish like if someone if they want to call themselves that that's fine but glenn beck i'm gonna be like nah you don't you don't get to call yourself that sorry <laughs> dude. 
Well, yeah, and my thing with Johnson is that just because you're fiscally conservative and socially liberal doesn't make you a libertarian. That makes you a moderate, right? That's not a really... Small, yeah, a small government moderate. If they want right. to call themselves a libertarian, I'm going to be like, eh, whatever. But if they're going to be representing yeah. an anarcho-capitalism or the you know the really principled libertarian, I'm going to be like, no, 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 no. No. <laughs> Come on back. <laughs> yeah, no, I, I, I think I agree there. So that's, that's my thoughts on, on Johnson. And I think Austin Peterson, I, can, I think he understands libertarianism pretty well. I think he gets the philosophy. Bomberan. Uh, Bomberan. <laughs> uh, uh, Hiroshima and Nakasaki. There, that was totally okay, libertarian. Okay, okay, maybe. Yeah, sure, sure, sure. Maybe you're right there. Um no, I think no, I, yeah, I I forgot about that part. <laughs> <laughs> I don't pay attention to him too much, but I think he, I think he understands how to talk to libertarians. I think he understands how to attract them, but I think that his reputation has kind of harmed him in a lot of ways, and I think that he's just not that great of a guy. You don't mean you, mean, uh, you don't like him, his uh, pyramid of. You're gonna put this on your podcast later, so I'm gonna not cut. <laughs> <laughs> but his pyramid of uh, sexual organs <laughs> of, of the opposite gender. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, I don't think that that's very classy. I don't think it really helped him much. Yeah. Um, I was he's hoping been that, a... uh, that my little kerfluffle with him would have gotten some traction, but no, I didn't push it too much. So it may have the, the yeah. whole like, oh, you know, Jim Jesus made a card about me and I tried to confront him at uh, International Students for Liberty Conference, even though he wasn't there. <laughs> <laughs> just made up story oh, yeah sorry, sorry, yeah, sorry to interrupt i just internet, want to make sure i interrupt well it. no <laughs> sure no, yeah it's just the internet strongman thing is uh i don't i just don't really like him i think he has some interesting stuff to say and i like what he said from um in the debates but uh, i just don't think that he's that great of a guy i also think that he would have done a decent job at, at picking up uh you know conservatives upset with trump I think that he could have picked up some of those, but I don't know if I really think that that's such a great thing. Yeah. I like well, Daryl Perry the most. I didn't well, really yeah. look into McAfee. But, yeah, yeah, McAfee would be like if if you know uh, someone like Peterson was a little, tightened up the screws on the principled uh, libertarian stands. But then you also have that whole thing about him and Belize maybe ahead murdering someone, which it seems like he didn't do. But good luck kind of convincing the general voting populace that that <laughs> that is not true <laughs> what was it like people were absolutely convinced that ron paul wrote those racist newsletters even though like we can prove oh, that yeah. he didn't you know it was someone else uh, whether it was lou rockwell or the guy that um michael dean had worked with we don't know but it seems like the guy that worked with michael dean was what was that website he ran i can't remember but yeah he ran a website with him and then he was like oh this guy's crazy and left uh yeah, it seemed like that guy is the one that wrote it. But yeah, you couldn't, you can't convince him, and that was the the hot trending topic at the time. So yeah, but good luck trying to convince. And then the whole video of him doing uh, cocaine off of his wife's butt that that would have gone over <laughs> well. But I don't really care about trying to. I mean, when you when you're running against a guy who's who who paints his his his, uh, his political opposition as the guy who killed JFK <laughs> you know like w w <laughs> I, you can't really make it, everything look too bad so i don't really care about james week getting naked in front of everybody it's funny to make fun of him about it but oh, you know yeah. cuz it's funny but to to say like oh this whole delegitimizes the whole thing it's like look who he's running against <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah i thought that was better. that was that was great and uh, I, I, I haven't heard anything from any of my LP friends about, it. and I think there were some of them there, but uh, I thought it was hilarious. I thought that's just great. Yeah, it was probably the highlight of the whole thing. Um, oh yeah. There was also some other. Oh, we should probably, I should probably explain it because there may be some people who don't follow this stuff at all because ah, oh, the yeah. LP is gross. So the, the Libertarian Party convention, <laughs> after they nominated uh, Gary Johnson and who was it Bill Wild as the VP running mate, who are totally libertarians, right? Um, mm -hmm. You know, and they said like, you know, so now we have someone that we that we can get elected and promote the libertarian message, even though they're not libertarians. Uh, they had what was it was it was a it was a guy who was uh, campaigning to be the chairman of the LP or some position in the LP. Yeah, I think and, it was chairman. And he wanted to do a speech, and like he got time to do a speech. He's from the Radical Caucus, which is the anarcho-capitalist 
kind of subsection of the Libertarian Party. And he stripped down in, in like a tuxedo thong <laughs> and was dancing around. Mm-hmm. And people were like saying this wholly legitimizes the Libertarian Party. I was like, where, where have you been for the last 20 years? <laughs> you know, um, <laughs> I thought that was that was the highlight. That's what really brought it. That's what really gave it like a, like okay, maybe I should check out the Libertarian Party again. Maybe they're cool, you know. <laughs> but then again, you know, Gary Johnson. But I like Gary Johnson. I'd seem like I would love to hang out with the guy, and he seemed like a really fun person to hang out with. But he makes it. He does his best to make me hate him. He like he tries his best, and it's starting to work on me. <laughs> it really is. It really. Yeah, is. that's how I I've kind of felt for the last couple of months. Like. Uh, I was like, I, I was okay with Gary Johnson until I kind of listened to him debate. I'm like, you're not that great of a candidate, dude. You don't know how to talk. Like, like you don't even, I felt like he didn't understand what he was, what he was saying at the debate that I watched. And especially compared to Peterson. <laughs> and then uh, I listened to the Joe Rogan interview with him. And uh, he's just talking about, the, the way he was talking about libertarianism and libertarian ideas. Like, you're, come on, dude. Well, you know, <laughs> you I was doing? governor of New Mexico, which is, if I recall correctly, a blue state, and it's two to one Democrat, and I won, and I vetoed a bunch of stuff, and he kind of, he's almost like an Emo Phillips, isn't he? <laughs> he's kind of like Emo Phillips running for president. <laughs> Which, if he actually, did, I mean, if he actually made his bowl cut a little bit more like Emo Phillips, I would probably vote for him. <laughs> Talk about coleslaw, <laughs> but <laughs> yeah. Um, so yeah, the, then then I guess after this had happened, he was nominated at the LP. Austin Peterson gave him a a, a replica flintlock gun of what uh, George Washington. And the rumor is, it seems like it's not true because, you know, Austin Peterson's a lying sack of shit. But, oh, sorry. Damn, you can bleep that one out. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Um, is a lying piece of garbage. Uh, and he he said that the Gary Johnson had taken the gun and was like, oh, thank you, and then threw it in the trash when no one was looking. Which I thought was very diplomatic because I would have thrown it away in his face uh, <laughs> for two reasons. One, Austin Peterson. Two, the uh, you know George Washington was not any sort of lover of liberty at all. This guy was the guy was like one of his first actions in office was to, to gun down uh, a rebellion against a whiskey tax a tax that he put on whiskey. Um, like four people died, a bunch of people were injured. So, I, you know, he's basically giving him – you couldn't win. You either – you kept the gun and, oh, look, he kept a, a symbol of federal tyranny or <laughs> he threw it away and he was a jerk. Mm-hmm. You can't win. So he, he glad he did it in public if he did it at all. Yeah, yeah. I, I didn't hear about that. I heard, um, I heard there was a contested convention. I don't really know what that means. Just okay. That. So uh, – so I can um, – there, there wasn't. Uh, well, I guess every LP there's, there's a contested convention, I believe, because there's <laughs> n- because they. Well, I mean, because they don't do uh, elections. They don't. They don't put anything on the ballot in any states. They think that that uses federal money, uh, and you know they're against that allegedly. And, and so what they what they do is they do local caucuses, and then you know the the local LPs will do caucuses, and then they'll send delegates out, and then they choose. Mm-hmm. So they don't. They don't use any ballot boxes to do it now when they get there then they have a con- uh, convention uh based on who they were bound to or uh, i guess they're always unbound there's yeah they're always unbound this i take that back <laughs> unless they're bound by particular state r- rules or whatever but most of them are unbound and then they all vote when they get there they see a debate and then they all vote to see who they want to nominate as their candidate that how's that work it's, it's the same thing as the democrats and republicans except they have they have more bound delegates. So when they first get there, the first ballot is always going to be what they choose. And now Trump's got two, uh, 1237. He passed that mark. So there's not going to be a contested convention. Like they're going to do the ballot. He has enough delegates. They're going to move on. Otherwise it would be a big fight. And then all the delegates become unbound and then they can fight like they did in uh, 1976. Yeah. In the Republican convention. I did my homework. I've been watching a lot of CNN well, network. Yeah. So, <laughs> wow, <laughs> 1976. Yeah, Republican history. Wow. That yeah, Gerald Ford and Ronald Reagan. And it was what was interesting about that because I had watched like, and then I, I was like, oh, that's an interesting thing. And I watched some videos about it. 
and they had a they had a big thing, and you know, Ronald Reagan uh, was was going against Gerald Ford, and they were had this big convention, and like there was almost like fist fights in the convention floor. It, it was so crazy, and then they nominated him, and then. Ronald Reagan was ex- thought he was going to win, so he didn't have a speech prepared, but he did one off the cuff, and it was it was a great speech, and it was so good that you can actually see when they were showing the cameras of people watching the debate, you can see in their eyes that they were like, ah, "We nominated the wrong guy. <laughs> we should have got this Reagan guy. What were we thinking?" But yeah, but they were all they were both tyrants in the end, so who cares? <laughs> Just one was more articulate. Yeah. <laughs> Um, so yeah, that's what you thought. Yeah. yeah I like Daryl W. Perry on a personal level, but I don't think he, he's very presidential. No, I don't think so either. Yeah. Um, yeah, he's a great guy and I really like what he's yeah. talking about. He's really principled, you know, he's an actual anarchist and you know, I, I appreciate that and I'm glad that he got up there and got to, to talk about it, but I didn't think he had a chance at all. Yeah. Um, I always wonder cause every, every single candidate they 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 either pretend that they're gonna win, you know, or or they really think that they're gonna win. And I don't get that. Like, why does everybody think like Austin Peterson was very confident that when I get to the White House, Gary Johnson, when I get to the White House, well, they always talk about when I win the nomination. I'm like, yeah, but why? Just so they can show confidence, or or do they actually believe that? That's a good point. Maybe maybe Peterson is a little delusional, or maybe he's not. Maybe I'm just biased, but <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> but you know, Daryl was saying the same thing, and I was thinking, well, I, like I just figure it's a campaign thing that you just kind of have to say that. Yep. Because if you say, "Well, I'm not going to win," then like, why are we going to vote for you? Yeah. All right, so I, I guess we can kind of pander to one of our listeners, Michael W. Dean, uh, because <laughs> I guess I. Th- I'm not, I haven't read this article yet. I sent you the link if you want to read it, or I can read it. But um, Gary Johnson and William Wild are like Nirvana in 1991, says Chris Novoselic, the bass player of Nirvana. Uh, the former Nirvana bassist announced Tuesday that he donated the maximum contrib- uh, con- contribute. I, I can't. I read this morning. You should probably read this <laughs> contribution to the Gary Johnson's presidential campaign. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so yeah, he, I guess he paid. Oh, I don't get like yeah. Why why like Nirvana? I think that's interesting, but uh, I'm I'm pulling it up. It's loading right now. Okay. Yeah, you just gave the. I can't remember where you just left off. Uh, I, I, basically, I radio. just read the headline, <laughs> the subtitle. Okay, okay, yeah, good, I, good. I just gave the yeah, maximum so, amount. Yeah. So the article goes quoting. Um, I'm not Chris, editing this. <laughs> <laughs> I just gave the maximum contribu- contribution to Gary, which is Twitter handle. Gov, at Gov Gary Johnson um, presidential campaign announced Chris Novoselic, the musician, activist, and author best known as the former bassist of Nirvana on Tuesday morning said that. Johnson, the former governor of New Mexico as a Republican, officially became the Libertarian Party's 2016 nominee over the weekend. Because it's the, the current Libertarian, year. Right. <laughs> the current year. The Libertarian vice presidential nominee is former Massachusetts Governor William Weld, also previously affiliated with the GOP. I don't know anything about Weld. He's basically except um, that he he's like Romney, except gun control. further to the left. Yeah, he he likes gun control. Ugh. Oh man, how does the LP get people like this? Well, hey, you know, because they were governors and they have some experience and they're articulate and they won red blue states and two to one blue states. <laughs> Emo Phillips and <laughs> yeah, and then so it, it's <laughs> the article goes on further. It says asked asked whether voting for Johnson would take votes away, quote unquote. Uh, from Democrats or Republicans, Novoselic replied that this election is like Nirvana in 1991. The Johnson Weld ticket can capture imaginations to bolt to the top. But what I don't think mean? it smells like teen spirit. It smells like <laughs> punk. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm sure there's some pheromones in there, right? Because that's the argument, basically. <laughs> that like, well, you know, but, you know, they can they can get on 10 percent on the ballot. It's like, well, yeah, there's pheromones in in arm po- and, and bo. You know, someone will be wooed by it. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> That's a great analogy. Perhaps a little overly ambitious and optimistic, but hey, you know what else seemed overly ambitious and optimistic? Nirvana, man. <laughs> also Donald Trump's presidential uh, candidacy, which is... All right, touche. Touche. <laughs> Yeah, but he did it, I guess, so I guess that's their point. That's his point. Yeah. Novus like once identified as a Democrat, but now says his political views are un- rec- uh, un- uncategorizable. In, 19, uh, in 1991, no, in 2008, Novus Selig supported Barack Obama. Ew. And in 2012, <laughs> he supported Ron Paul. Uh, yeah, yeah, there's some redemption in that third act, I guess. <laughs> I, I'm an anarcho-capitalist, <laughs> socialist, moderate. I don't know. Uh, I think he does know. If you're going to drop that ANCAP word, you know. <laughs> yeah. Um, watch the whole interview below. Uh, no, no, I'm not going to watch uh, Well, I'll watch it later, just not right now. I'm recording a podcast. I don't know if you know that. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, so but, what do you think about all these washed up rockers from the 90s <laughs> endorsing presidential candidates from third party? I don't know. I... <laughs> I'm glad that they're endorsing third party candidates. I think it's better than endorsing Trump. I'm glad that people are looking for some sort of alternative, but you know, I wish they would they would be a little bit more uh intellectually structured about it. <laughs> that they actually uh, cared to understand political theory and and the ideas behind it. But I, I you know, I, I think it's better than, than nothing, so I'm not gonna complain too much, I guess. Yeah. Uh, there, there is one. I mean, th- for me, it seems like the only real benefit for someone like Gary Johnson running is that he's polling ten percent or fifteen percent if he gets it. Um, if he gets that much, then he can be on the debates and he, he'll say the word libertarian, and people will have to be, have to say the word libertarian on TV that it's not and not in a pejorative sense, and which makes people Google and find actual libertarians. That's the only good thing that you know that came out of Ron Paul was. Mm-hmm. You know, not that he had the chance of winning. Uh, I never held that 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 hope at all. I was like, oh, this guy's definitely not going to win because libertarian freedom is not a popular position. It's not. Uh, pe- people don't like freedom or liberty, whatever those words mean. Uh, but they uh, <laughs> they don't like it. They, they you know they they're generally opposed to having any sort of uh, individual autonomy. And if you can just get them to go libertarian, you know, some of this thing stuff that this guy is saying is really interesting. Let me read it, in, read into it some more. And then they find people like, you know, the ANCAP uh, Chicago schools or the ANCAP Austrians, you know, like how I kind of found it. Like I was a minarchist for a while and then I got tricked into being an anarcho capitalist by Rothbard by reading the libertarian manifesto. Oh, this is going to be a book about small government, right? Nope. Mm-hmm. And he kind of leads you down that path. Like, <laughs> you're just like, oh, you know, here's all these <laughs> things you could agree with. Well, let's get a little bit edgier. Let's get a little bit edgier. How about, how about courts, roads, police, the whole government? And you're like, damn it, I was tricked in it. <laughs> yeah. 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 I, I think you're right there. I think that's the best thing that the LP can do because, no, they're not going to win. But, uh, and that's why I don't really like Gary Johnson as the nominee. I'd rather have somebody like Austin Peterson who can articulate these ideas from a from at least You're fired appearing from the to Walberts. be. <laughs> <laughs> I'm really not as critical as of the LP as, as many anarchists are. Um, I I think that they could do some good, but I don't like Gary Johnson. I think I do think that Peterson would have been able to do a better job at talking about libertarianism. I don't think that he really uh, embodies the philosophy wholly, you know, in, in in every sense, right? Like I think anarchists do, but uh, I do think that he would be better at explaining libertarianism than. Uh, Johnson. But anarcho capitalism is stupid, Tom, and I don't debate anybody yeah. who says that with you. In fact, <laughs> the, 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 the federal. You, you, by the way, I'm going to link that in the show notes. The, uh, <laughs> the Austin Peterson board game. This is great. <laughs> but, oh, yeah. I haven't heard that. Oh, it's great. I yeah. have to look at that. Yeah, yeah, it's funny. In the show notes. But uh, I. No, so, sorry. One thing I didn't like. Uh, well, I kind of stopped, but I, I want to I say one more thing. One thing I didn't really like about 
Peterson's campaign was this idea. It, all, it seemed like every time I heard, I watched one of his videos speaking, he always said, we're going to take over the government to leave you alone. <laughs> As if that's attracting anybody but libertarians. Like nobody else cares about being left alone other than libertarians and paleoconservatives. Yeah. Well, no, paleo conservatives want to leave you alone, but you know, still want to force you to do things like, <laughs> right? You're like, oh, we're gonna yeah, take tax money from you. We're gonna take tax money from you to prevent people from coming over the borders because they might vote Democrat and that'll increase spending. Because you know, voting Republican doesn't increase spending. Uh, speaking of Ooh. government spending, we should probably go through uh, <laughs> Gary Johnson's platform, right? The government. Oh yeah. So the first one on his list is government spending. By the time Barack Obama leaves office, the national debt will be. $20 trillion. That's just obscene. It's unsustainable. <laughs> I can't do it for too long. I just want to laugh. <laughs> and arguably the single greatest threat to international security. Uh, security. Um, blah, blah, blah. And, you know, of course, WWE points out that Bush wasn't any better. Um, uh, so he says he wants to cut s the spending, but he doesn't really talk about any specifics but then again to give him credit he kind of does just like to veto everything that comes across his desk <laughs> everything even even some of the stuff he's like oh i regret i regretted that i vetoed that because i would actually cut spending in the end <laughs> but hey you know breaking even's better than increasing right yeah yeah and then taxes uh, of course, you know he probably just says he wants to cut taxes. You know, un unless they don't want to bake, uh, you know, a Nazi, uh, bake a Nazi a cake, right? Yeah, that would be that would be part of it. Yeah, I think his point is that, uh, you know, I like this about a lot of libertarians is that the tax code's too complicated. I don't think that's what he's saying here. Yeah, I, I skimmed through it, and, you know, having seventy thousand pages of, of 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 I think it's just federal tax regulations, but I'm not sure. I don't I don't really know. Now you're in Oregon, no. so they have they have state income tax. Do you have to pay that as a as a farmer, or are you you totally avarice well, now? Um, I would have to pay if I made enough money, oh, okay. <laughs> but I don't make enough money, so I don't have to pay it. Not yet. Someday, I, I mean, I hope to be making enough money to pay the taxes, though I don't really want to pay the taxes. Mm -hmm. You want you I'm just sure want to be at that level, so you have to worry about that because you know maybe you're rolling in the cash, right? Right. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, um, you know, like we don't. I don't have to deal with that here in uh, Nevada because Nevada does not have a state income tax, which is nice. Uh, we do have. We have. Uh, you, you guys don't have uh, sales tax, but we do. So that's kind of the trade off, I yeah. guess. But it's it's not as yeah, high as like L.A. Uh, yeah, that's a nice thing. But recently, I think recently, maybe it's not passed yet, but uh, somewhere in. I think it's all of Oregon. They passed this weird tax on like gross sales. I didn't understand it, but it starts out at the very bottom, you know, at the very beginning of the supply chain where they tax. So, it, and then the, the, of course, the price gets increased because of it, right, throughout the whole thing. So, the argument is that we're all paying taxes now, a sales tax. It's not really a sales tax, but they're taxing some of the, um, what, I don't. I didn't understand it. I probably shouldn't talk about it if I don't understand it. Yeah. But I thought it was kind of interesting what I read about it. But yeah, I, I yeah, I'm, I don't know much about it, so I'm I'm gonna stop. Yeah, well, they they talking. do some really interesting way ways of like uh, increasing taxes without you knowing it. Because what they do is they say, okay, well, we're gonna have a uh, you know in, instead of saying like okay, we're gonna increase your 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 income tax and people would freak out. But if you can say we're gonna tax those corporations, then they're gonna be like, oh yeah, tax those corporations because you know I'm envious. You know, everybody has that envy kind of greed thing. It's kind of hardwired and hardwired evolution to think that if someone has more uh, than you, it's because they stole from you. Because back in those days, it was true. Like, that's the only way you can possibly get rich <laughs> was by stealing uh, wealth from others. But now wealth is so, you know, because of capital goods and everything, every, you know, wealth is can be created without th stealing. Uh, unless you talk to a Marxist. And that, that's another story. Um <laughs> So, uh, you know, what they do is they say, okay, we're going to tax them. But then, of course, the corporations just go, well, if you're going to tax us, we still need to make a bottom line, right? And if you're, you're just going to raise our prices for goods. And then, you know, if you're doing it 
10 levels down, you know, you have the producer that's making your pizza plus, you know, the, the people that, that make the eggs or the farmers that make the eggs, the people that make the, the flour, the people that in all, all those scales of production backwards, uh, you know, prices rise up. You don't notice it. You just say, Oh, it's inflation, whatever, (laughs) but it's not, you know, you're Mm -hmm. actually getting taxed 10 levels down, but you're agreeing to it by taxing the corporations, but corporations don't pay taxes. You, they just increased, they, they just passed that on to the consumers because they got to make money. Otherwise, they go out of business, right? Right. Right. So that's how that works. <laughs> but yeah, mm-hmm. it's, that's kind of the same thing. If you tax the businesses, then, you know, you're basically taxing you. All right. So, yeah. Gerbs. That's it. <laughs> Does he just want to, what is, what is, all, all the, all, every single presidential candidate, we're going to create more jobs. Mm hmm. Yeah. But I don't – how do you create – okay, oh, let's see. This. Okay, let's, I'll read this. During the 2012 campaign, Gary Johnson was lauded for having the best job creation record of all of the former governors running for president. His response was, as governor, I didn't create a single job. His point, of course, being that the government doesn't create jobs except for itself. Oh, I like that. Yeah, see, so I'm he – glad. He, so he, he does say some libertarian stuff every once in a while. <laughs> Between the, yeah, uh, ba- just bake the damn cake and <laughs> give up your guns, you know, and you, I won't tax you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah, they don't they don't create jobs. The government's role is to create no. and maintain the regulatory and tax environment, which uh, provide private job creators can prosper. Well, yeah, well, that's true. Gary Johnson did it as governor. Yeah, that's debatable. <laughs> yeah. Huh. That's that's interesting. I'm glad he says that because that's a that's an interesting point, and I like that. Um, somebody told me, I think it was my grandpa, told me that that small businesses are actually they actually employ the most people, like mm-hmm. well, like across nationwide. Like more people are are employed by small businesses than by corporations and the government. And I didn't know that. I don't know if that's true, but I thought it was interesting. Do you, do you know? Well, it seems like that's the case because even the Democrats are, are like for it. Oh, we should, maybe we should cut taxes for, for small businesses. You know, and if they say that, you know, that's kind of like, okay, maybe there's something here, you know, because they can't mm-hmm. attack that because it's such a large voting, con- you know, constituent, constituents? I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> So even <laughs> not even they could do that, right? Um, yeah, gerbs. But uh, you know, uh, there was there was that that fake debate between Bernie Sanders and Donald Trump. It was on some comedy show, and he was like, "I like jobs. Jo- I I like jobs so much. The Bible's great to be. They actually have a chapter in the book called Jobs." <laughs> but, yeah. Uh, so yeah, he, he can be he can be a little bit principled, but then you know. Like, so pretty much every, I mean, this this platform does not seem bad. You know, he talks about personal freedom. You should do whatever you want unless you don't want to bake uh, a gay couple a cake. Um, foreign policy and national defense, you know, he kind of just wants to let everybody be uh, immigration. There's not much really to attack here. He he kind of keeps his, his, his dumb stuff on the public stage. But when he when he's trying to appeal to libertarians, he can be pretty good. Unless he says, yeah. you know, Bill Wield's the original libertarian. <laughs> yeah. Jeez, sorry Rothbard. Uh, <laughs> sorry Ayn Rand. Sorry uh, Milton Freeman. Sorry all you OG libertarians. <laughs> Paul <laughs> Gordon. <laughs> Who? <laughs> <laughs> Glenn Beck. Excuse me. Um, criminal justice reform. Uh, of course, Bobby wants to legalize drugs. Internet. Yeah. So he's pretty good. I mean, there's not much to really pick through any of this stuff like we could with. Mm-mm. And Donald Trump didn't have much to pick. I mean, we could actually do a whole other episode on Donald Trump's now because he's got a whole new policy on his website than he did last time. I think he had what? No, like really? Th- he had, well, he had like, well, before we did our show, I had noticed that he only had one thing on there. When we did our show, I was like, oh, he had some stuff to it. So it was like three things, three three extra things. And now he's, you know, he's got <laughs> actually like an actual platform, allegedly, because you know how he is. He's like, oh, yeah, you know. You know what? Like even during the same debate, he'll change his mind. <laughs> but even still, with all this stuff, I still think the the person that had at least as far as taxes go, not everything else, by 
don't get me wrong. Don't misquote me here. This guy is not great at all. But you know, his tax plan was uh, it was Ted Cruz had this thing where he just wanted to abolish the IRS and then make your income tax basically a, a 10% flat tax. And then you fill out like a postcard with your tax information, how much you made. And that's it. Now, I, wow. Yeah. They, that's, <laughs> that, that would be better for sure. Yeah. Whether or not he could do that, that's a different thing. Because everybody says they're going to cut taxes. And yeah. Even Al Gore came out on a forklift with all the, the tax code in the 90s and was like, we need to get rid of all this stuff. And he didn't, you know, <laughs> or at least Clinton <laughs> didn't. Bush was talking about cutting it. Uh, Obama was even talking about how it was too complicated. I think they did do the, the easy form, the easy W-2 or 1040. Uh, yeah, they're never going to cut taxes. They they mean they can't, right? They're already overspending their budget. You know, they're not going <laughs> to they're not going to cut their fire up them printing presses, right? Yep. So yeah, I mean, that's that's Gary Johnson, but you know, can he could he not be Emo Phillips? Can he not be so bitchy? <laughs> you know, does he have to be that kind of like whiny like, well, you know, me you. We should, you know, it's just saying absurd things every once in a while. You're just like, oh, come on. Really? Bill Will, the original yeah. libertarian. Are we, are we, that's where we're going here. Jeez. And I was listening to the Joe Rogan podcast with him. and uh, Which I liked that episode, by the way. Yeah, it was good. It, yeah. I, I thought it was decent. But I didn't like the way he was answering questions. He answered quite Paul and Joe Rogan. Rogan would be like, hey, what do you think about this? Or like, or... He'd say something like, "Oh, it was about." I think I'm thinking about prisons. So he asked, "Well, wouldn't this happen if we privatize prisons?" And then he, instead of saying no, he says, "Well, I think that it would." Like, and he goes off, and I'm like, "Well, just answer the question," and he answers it in a very roundabout way, and but it doesn't make any sense to me. Right? I kind of got what his point was, and I just because I understand libertarian economic. Yeah, you, right, you kind but, of sort sort it out a little bit. Oh, you're of that that camp, right? So he's he's saying that you know privatizing the prisons is, is much more effective, and then mm -hmm. uh, you know in terms of spending money, and then Joe Rogan's point is well, if we give incentive to a private company exactly to make money off of incarcerating people, aren't we going to incarcerate more people? Which is you know I think it's a it's a fine point, but he didn't answer that question, and he's like, "Well, I think it's important to realize that blah blah blah." And maybe maybe Johnson was trying to say that no matter what, the government, even the public ones, they're trying to incarcerate more people too because of the unions. I think that's what he was saying. Now it's coming back to me. Maybe it did make sense, but I didn't like the way he answered the question. It's just like all politicians; they won't they won't say yes or no. They have to give their explanation. Yeah, but I hate that. I, I I do think there's there's there is an incentive problem with private prisons. I mean, it's like it's like the one thing where you can't really kind of say that you know in you know selling off a government contract for you know particular jobs usually is better. Usually is better sometimes. Sometimes in some cases, and I think prisons is the exact opposite. That's like one of the counter examples where it doesn't work because you're basically getting money per inmate. And of course you're going to lobby the governments to increase certain types of laws like drug laws in order to kind of have more income, right? Because if more people come to your jails, the more people you get paid for, whatever. Whereas the unions, it, it kind of works like that, but not as strong because you're basically paying you what you want is more employees, right? Not more inmates. So you can have more employees, but less inmates. So there's a, there's a difference of an incentives there, but yeah. I see the point, but I, I think I think the uh, the private corp corporations owning prisons is actually one case where that's probably not a good idea, unless you're talking about like a system like an anarcho capitalist system where it's a dr where, where it's an economic drain on uh, the uh, polycentric legal orders, <laughs> you know, where they have to incarcerate someone. That's actually a cost to them, so they're going to figure out like, well, what can we do to keep him out? You know, can he be re rehabilitated? Can he pay restitution? Can he do this or that? So. Yeah. yeah, I totally agree. Yeah. But in a status system, <laughs> this is like the one example you don't want a private company doing that. <laughs> Everything else, most of, the, most of the time, building roads, that's eh, all fine. But, yeah, this is one case where it's not a good idea. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Worms. <laughs> <laughs> Just laid down some wrecking stuff. Okay, so... 
Yeah, I think there's, there's kind of, you know, not much we can talk about Gary Johnson, uh, you know, except that I want to like him, but I can't because he, he's so unprincipled and he, he tries to pander to liberals too much, um, which is kind of the same is true with Austin Peterson with conservatism. Mm-hmm. You know? And I guess we can get in some pod beef with, with Libertarian Hangout. Do you? <laughs> Because he's been sure. shilling, he's been shilling need, super hard for Austin Peterson. Uh, that's Justin Muldo, right? Or what's his I, name? I don't know. I don't really Muld- care. I don't know. I don't remember. The logo. I looks didn't listen terrible, to that ever. Way. It lo- it looks so cheesy in Photoshop. Like just like it's rough. It looks like a rough edit. Like oh, this is kind of how we wanted to look. Oh, eh, well, that's good enough. <laughs> uh, <laughs> <laughs> that's terrible. <laughs> but yeah, he kind of has this position where like oh, we need to elect someone with a little less more principle. A little less principle, but can can promote libertarianism in the libertarian party because that's what will help, right? But you know, when they choose one person over the other, you know, then you know, then it's a problem. Then it makes the LP look bad. But it's like, what about Austin Peterson, who actually did a podcast, a whole podcast, talking about how we should bomb Iran and that you know, nuking Nagasaki and Hiroshima was a good idea. It was totally libertarian. You know, like the fifth grade civics lesson version of the World War Two. You know, he's just spouting off this yeah. nonsense, and you know, and he seems like he likes George Washington enough to buy a replica gun as a gift. Like and George Washington was a tyrant. <laughs> he was. He was not. Mm-hmm. Yeah, he was terrible. He was one of the worst founding fathers. Wor- uh, worse than Hamilton, in my opinion. <laughs> really, worse than yeah. Hamilton? I think he's worse than oh, Hamilton. I hate him. Well, he, he he actively shot people who rebelled against his taxes. Uh, that's true. <laughs> so I mean, that's. Yeah. I mean, yeah, sure. Yeah, he actually put a lot of it into practice. Hamilton was just a dirtbag, and he he yeah. just encouraged people to do things. Well, George Washington actually went out and did it like a real man. Yeah. And then uh, <laughs> uh, from what I hear, the Hamilton play was great. So, I mean, that's one good thing about him, right? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Where's the Washington play? I didn't hear that one winning a Tony Award. <laughs> um, but Michael Malice is like all about Alexander <laughs> Hamilton for whatever reason. I can't decipher any logic from that. I like Michael Malice, but... Sometimes he says some things like, oh, yeah, Hillary Clinton's the best libertarian candidate. I'm like, what? Yeah, he, he's he's a contrarian. I like him, though. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's that's brilliant. Though. Yeah, trolling people is fun. Mm-hmm. Jeez. Oh, he, he's a I, great I, troll. I, and he's, he gets on yeah. Fox News and trolls as an ad, ad and cap. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah, and he wears like the little ad cap oh. pin, the little Dobby Barker ad cap pins every once in a while. Oh, cool. <laughs> <laughs> that's awesome. Yeah. So, uh, yeah. Uh, so he's been shilling for him hard and he was just basically like, oh, it's terrible that we, like, we chose one unelectable or unelectable third party fringe candidate who is unprincipled over the other, you know, and that one makes the look LP look bad, but the other one doesn't, you know, that <laughs> like pick one, pick one, yeah. pick one argument and stick with that, please. But I've been, I've been, uh, I've been trolling him pretty hard on, on Twitter and he, he's got this ignore thing now. And now I don't know if everybody's kind of figured out, but you know, like I'm not a napper. I don't, I, the non-aggression principle I don't hold is an axiom. Uh, I have some issues with it. Um, I like to think of it as a rule of thumb and, you know, that's upset a lot of people, but even still like Austin Peterson's arguments against the NAP and Liberty, uh, Liberty hangouts arguments against it are just so freaking retarded. Like, sorry to, but there's no other yeah. way of putting it. There's, it's so bad. Like even like, I agree with your, I, I agree with your, with your premise or your conclusion, but the, the road that you get there is dumb. You know, it's, it's stupid lane mm-hmm. that you're getting there. I don't, I, uh, cause I'm the same way. And when Austin Peterson, when I heard that he wasn't for the non-aggression principle, I wanted to hear him out. And I was hoping that I was going to get to talk to him when I saw him, but I didn't get to hear his full argument. Um, but yeah, I'm not familiar with it. So, you, okay. So Austin Peterson, they, Austin Peterson and Liberty Hangouts kind of have different positions on it, even though they kind of agree cause they're kind of butt buddies to speak, uh, so to speak, <laughs> uh, I'm trying to find the Liberty Hangout version article because I can link that. We could talk about that for a second because that's pretty bad. Um, but the Austin Peterson one is, well, you know, uh, you know, Rothbard said, you know, and he created it that, you know, it's okay to starve your children uh, because of the NAP. 
And that's, you know, that's what he said in the ethics of liberty. And that's why the non-aggression principle is bad. <laughs> Not just bad, stupid. And, and well, but it's, it's a dumb argument. <laughs> Right. It's not that it doesn't really defeat the non-aggression principle. I, I the way I would take what I would take from that to make it sound more philosophically into like, more I guess um honestly intellectual, intellectually honest. That's that's the term. Yeah. Um would be that we have some sort of obligation to our children to take care of our children. Um therefore I don't know. I don't know how to make that argument. I guess I don't know. I just don't. Right, yeah, so, I think you're right. It's not a. It's not a. So here's the, here's the thing with that thing because there actually is there is a section in uh, the Ethics of Liberty where Rothbard is talking about how uh, you have no moral obligations, and one of the examples he brings up is that in, in a liber libertarian social order, if you let your child starve to death, um, that doesn't violate the non-aggression principle as as morally reprehensible as you may find it. It doesn't violate the non-aggression principle because that would enact by you mandating that you have to feed him. That does like enact a, a a moral duty in order to do something, and it would it would violate the non-aggression principle to force someone to do that. However, the uh, what has been brought up to him since, uh, and even even by his own personal friends like uh, Block, I think has made this argument that no, you actually do have a moral obligation, just in the same respect that if you kidnap someone and you let them starve. Uh, you know, if you're if you're holding someone hostage and they can't leave, you're morally bound to at least make sure that they they survive, right? That you can't starve someone because that would that would actually be murder. And if you let a child starve to death, that would be murder because you are a a guardian. You took up a guardianship position, right? So so you you can't just let someone starve. And that's been kind of like the yeah Rothbard. You know, that's a good book, but you know that one part was pretty dumb. Yeah, mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, like that, that was just a bad argument from him. I mean, so there's been a lot of uh, debate between this. So, I mean, it's not just set in stone that the NAP, therefore, child starve. You know, there, there's a lot of deeper analysis that you can go into it. Liberty Hangout's position is uh, was dumb. Um, I can't find this article. So I'm not going to bother with it. But what he was saying on Twitter was that, you know, if if you have a verbal agreement between your neighbor that you can borrow his lawnmower and you he never specifies when you can take it back, is it is it aggression to uh, to steal it back after that if he refuses to give it up? You know, and it's it's pretty clear, you know, if a verbal contract you, implications matter, you know, whereas a written contract, there's no implications that you can because everything needs to be hashed out in a written agreement, whereas a verbal agreement, you have to have some sort of nuance, right? You have to have some sort of implication like, he, oh, he said he was going to borrow my lawnmower. He didn't say for two years, you know, <laughs> you know, that could be like, OK, mm -hmm. that, that's that's a little egregious, you know, give it back, you know. But it, it, and I was like trying to make this point, like, I'm not a napper, but your argument is dumb, like. You know, Rothbard has a great chapter in his book about the NAP, and I'm not going to get into it on the show because I don't want to fight. <laughs> <laughs> this is all about having fun, but yeah, it just is just yeah. The Liber Liberty Hangout. He's been losing credibility. Like, there's been like an alternate Twitter account that's been made in his honor called Cancer Hangout. Um, <laughs> Cancer Hangouts. <laughs> yeah, it's it's great. <laughs> So we've been making like memes about him and you know, the hail Hydra meme with, uh, uh, Captain America. And he says, you know, hail Hydra. Cause you know, now he switched side and, and you, then you see like the alternate ones, like where <laughs> spider man saying F responsibility and <laughs> Deadpool saying F chimichangas and, uh, Batman says, I shot my parents. Uh, so I made one says like be principled <laughs> at, <Pin> <laughs> uh, at Austin Peterson say, uh, uh, don't nuke Iran. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, that's awesome. Yeah, so that's our pod beef for today. Nice. <laughs> Since I don't want to have pod beef with uh, the other libertarian show with bad audio, which which by the way they they gotten better. I don't know what happened, but I don't know if they took my advice seriously or not. But new bird libertarians out, it's sounding better. They're doing a better job. But, yeah. Nice. Yeah. It turns out she's from Vegas, the girl that runs that. I didn't know that. That was interesting. So, mm. Yeah. I'll have to check them out since you recommended them. Um, yeah. And if their audio is better, then I'll definitely listen. Yeah. Yeah, that one with Lines of Liberty, I don't know what, what was going on with that one, but it was pretty bad. Mm. No pod beef, though. No pod beef. No. No. We're, we're, 
we're extending an olive branch to them, I guess. <laughs> so what's been going on with your farm? Because that's what that's why that's why I like having you on. Is I want to hear you talk about your farm because it's, <laughs> it's so. Farm. Tell me about your yaks. Um, I uh, I I recently had a lot of additions to the yak herd. I think we have fourteen in the main herd now, and now and I have two bulls that are separated. Um, I guess so. I just had two new calves last week. I think. Yeah, I think it was last week. I lose track of my time a lot of the, I just don't know what day it is, but I know today's Tuesday because it's on the count. Anyway, um, I, I do the same thing. If I if I miss a couple of days of work or something, I'm like, I don't even know what day it is. <laughs> yeah, I, I never know. <laughs> Unless it's I have something thing I keep a telling planner. me every day. Today's the 29th. Today's the 30th. Today's the 31st. I just don't know. <laughs> that's a, that, <laughs> that's the nice thing about my Chrome robot turd is I just have that, and every day it tells. Uh, uh, you know, as soon as I turn on May 29th, whatever it is. But yep. yeah, I had I had some calves, and uh, they're adorable. They're they, yeah, calves are so cute. They're smaller than regular Aww. cattle calves, and they're and they have curly hair, and they're kind of like fluffy, while a, a calf just kind of has straight hair with some like cow licks, you know. The ones just they look like little Rand stick Pauls, up somewhere. Huh? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's that's a good one. <laughs> But in the, I have one of them that has a little heart shape uh, on its head. It's white heart on its Aww. on its forehead. Yeah, that's really cute. Um, and I think they're both males, which is kind of good and kind of bad. Like it's it's been an interesting thing to try and plan the business around yaks because they take two years to mature, and that's a long time for you know trying to make a business plan and trying to make some money. Right, because I gotta wait two years for every animal I have that's gonna be butchered. Did, isn't like pigs and most other animals? Isn't it almost like a year for them to mature? Yeah, like for pigs, it can be from some people will butcher as early as six months, depending on the breed. Some breeds will really gain weight, um, and and they'll be like two hundred pounds at six months. I don't, I'm like, I could be wrong. They're at least a hundred pounds by six months, but my my pigs, it's about a year. Um, and that's so that's much nicer, and I can. I, that's why I have the pigs is to make a little bit more short term revenue, so I don't, you know, I don't have to wait so long to, to make money off of the yaks. You know, I can sell five pigs, in a year, and that's a lot nicer than waiting to sell one yak every two years. But so far, I'm gonna have revenue for the next, I think, three years, um, because I'll have I'm gonna butcher another one in July, and then I'm gonna butcher two next March. And then I'll butcher these two that were just born in probably the March after that. Okay. I think if I can do math, I don't know. <laughs> I'm a high school dropout. I can't do math anymore. <laughs> I thought you rose out. Pick one. No, that's on. right. Sorry, I rose out. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So you got you got a couple of yaks that you're going to slaughter. You, do you do the slaughtering yourself, or do you outsource it to a a business? Yeah. That I outsource it. Okay. Um, so far, I don't have a main yak butcher. I'm kind of figuring that out because people aren't really used to that. You know, they it's just kind of weird when you ask a butcher to butcher an animal that they don't really know anything about. You have to tell them, well, it's like a small, hairy, horned cattle or cow. And they're like, oh, okay. And then they see the horns. They're like, mm, I don't know if we can <laughs> we can handle that because they get a little bit scared. And uh, I mean, I can't blame them, but so it's, that's interesting. A little, I gotta, I gotta call up a bunch of butchers and try to convince them to to butcher my yaks now. That, or you could probably try to try to butcher them yourself. Have you thought about that, or is that too too um, much? Too much? Well, I, I it would be it would be hard. Be, I mean, I couldn't sell the meat if I did everything myself. Oh, but yeah. I think if I slaughtered and then took it to a place where they'd cut it up, I think it'd be fine. Um, but it's also, I've, I've harvested like two or three pigs and they're like eight times smaller than a yak. So it's a, there's a big difference and I'm not sure I'm ready to, to try and hang up a yak and, and skin it. Mm. I'd have to, I'd have to watch a lot of YouTube videos. I probably have somebody come down and help me. 
but <laughs> I do someday. I want video? to. I want to do it someday. Is there like a YouTube community for yak yak butchering or something? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if they have it for yaks, but they're so similar to beef cattle that I would I would just look up how to. They'll Are we be back? back? Yeah. You got droned. Okay. I'll I'll, oh, I'll edit that part out, but I'm, I'm not. <laughs> okay, so, yeah, you were Did saying. leave off to me? You were saying on YouTube you watched Butchers. Oh, yeah, I could watch YouTube. Uh, I could watch Butchers on YouTube, and I probably wouldn't. I don't think there is anybody who's shown how to butcher a yak. There might be. I think that would be really interesting. But um, I would probably just look up how to butcher a cow, like a highland cattle, because they're similar. Mm-hmm. But yeah, there's so, some videos of people milking yaks, but there's not there's not meant much. Most of the videos I've seen are like baby yaks and uh, and bulls fighting. Yeah, which is kind of neat to see. I would imagine like a lot of the, those videos are probably like, oh, we're in the Himalayas and look, they're they're milking this yak for 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 yak butter tea. Uh, I can't imagine there's like you know someone actually having like a YouTube community like, okay, so we've come up with a new way, and then like someone's like, oh. Don't listen to to, to Yak Farmer two one nine. They don't know what they're talking about. You don't cut off the arm that way, <laughs> and then have like a rigorous debate about yak butchering. It doesn't seem like that's that's the thing that's on YouTube. But I don't know. I've seen some no. pretty dark areas of of YouTube that you know, nightmare fuel. <laughs> Why not yeah. yak farming? You know, it seems like a little bit more <laughs> more of a popular thing. <laughs> believe it or not, I hope so. Yeah. So uh, you got pigs going too? Yeah, I have like thirty pigs now. Uh, it's getting it's getting crazy. It's pretty it's pretty fun. Uh, I had uh, had like three litters born in two months, and uh, well, I guess four litters, but one was a litter of one. So I'm not really counting that as a litter. It's just the one little pig that runs around on its own. Um, but they I had a litter of five, and then I had a litter of and I had another litter of either four or five, I haven't actually been able to count them um, because I, I let them have their babies out in the field. So what I have them, I have them on seven acres of pasture and then they have a barn that they go into to, to rest and, and sleep and do whatever they want. And so I have that open to them and the yaks. The yaks are on the same pasture. And uh, I just let the, the two sows have their, I guess it was three sows, have their babies out there in the barn. And uh, I didn't mess with them at all. And they did it on their own because... Believe it or not, most people don't believe this. A lot of pig farmers, if you talk to them, they want you to coddle your sows and be there like every step of the way, and it's ridiculous. Um, would, was, some breed. Would Would you think Bricktop would would think that same way? Would he have that same? Who Who's that? You don't even know. Okay, so Snatch. You never seen that movie Snatch? No. He was, he, there, he, he was a he was a pig farmer. Uh, he was a, he did underground boxing, and anybody who he was like kind of like a mobster at the same time. So anybody who disagreed with him, he'd kill and feed to the pigs. And he had this whole explanation of why you know like you should never trust anybody with the pig farm, or you should be wary of anybody with a pig farm because you know he you know it's so easy to pe- feed people. To, it's a great way to get rid of bodies because because pigs yeah. will eat 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 a body up like nothing. Yeah, I've probably heard about that part of that movie, but I don't remember it. Yeah, come on, man. you got to watch all the movies that, that's related to your industry. Come on, man. <laughs> <laughs> You've seen Babe at least, right? <laughs> yes, I've okay. seen Babe. I read the book. In fact, oh, no, Babe wasn't a book, was it? No, I originally it was a book. No, no, no. There was a book. The Babe was a book. I remember okay. reading the book when I was a I've... kid, and then or I think it was in high school when the movie came out, and I was like, oh, that's kind of neat they made a movie, but I don't care. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't care about the Charlotte. I think they did. They make a movie about Charlotte's Web yet? Did they do one with all the CG animals? Uh, I, or I know they made a cartoon. Okay. I don't know if they made a CGI one. Yeah. Would, would would if you watched it, would you be like, okay, that I think I think it's ready for bacon now? Or is, is um, that is that a little ooh. too edgy? <laughs> no, I I do think about animals that way. Okay. I think about when can I butcher this and what and how they look, but I don't remember anything about. Charlotte's Web or Babe. Babe was definitely too young throughout that movie. And yeah. I think in Charlotte's Web, the pig was too young too, but eventually I probably got old enough. Yeah. So so do you and make the enough. bacon? Do you cure the bacon? Or do you I wish I could. Um, I want to do that someday, but our pigs are so small because I raise them on grass. I don't feed them hardly any grain, so they don't, they don't, 
build as much and they're and they're not really designed the the breed isn't really a bacon breed. They're they're just bacon breed. breeds? Well, I mean it's not really called the bacon breed, but it's a breed that's designed for meat over fat. And uh so larger breeds that aren't lard breeds are going to have more bacon because they'll have more meat in there. That while the lard pigs are just going to have a lot of fat, and they're going to have a lot of lard. So, so, a, so that. a lean bacon wouldn't taste good, but you could still cure it and stuff, right? Yeah, I, I mean, I don't think there's. I don't. I've never seen lean bacon. It's always it's always going to have fat in it. <laughs> of course, yeah, right. Because yeah. it's. I mean, that's what it is. It's just it fat be, and a little bit of meat. Yeah, it wouldn't be lean bacon. It'd be leaner bacon. <laughs> yeah, like now with ten uh, no, percent less fat. <laughs> no, but you can make you can make a leaner bacon, and you can still carry it and it'd be fine. Um, but you do you do want some of the fat because of it, it. I think that it helps. It's I don't I don't really know. I don't know much about bacon curing or or charcuterie, whatever it is. Um, is that, oh, that, there's a term curing. for it. I, yeah, see, I am I am woefully ignorant about about a, <laughs> a staple in the American diet that was a staple in mine for a while, but it's it's coming back. It's yeah. coming back. So it, I'm, in, I'm, I'm introducing yeah. meat. Bacon's delicious. Oh yeah, yeah. I'm reintroducing meat in my. I haven't still haven't had bacon. In a long time, mm. you're not even in my cheat. You're not even in my cheats. Not even in my cheat wow. days. Yeah, no, no bacon. So, huh. yeah, bacon's. Um, if you're having pasture fed and pasture raised bacon, like that stuff is. It's actually, I as far as the research that I've done, and there's obviously controversy about diets and dieting. Um, is actually Needless pretty good for you. Yeah, because uh, I, the from what I've read. There, if you pasture raise an animal, um, its fat is going to contain have have a lot more vitamin D than one that would be factory farmed. Oh. So if it's out like a factory farm pig is going to be in a warehouse and they're never going to see, you know, sunshine or grass. Yeah. So they're not going to get any vitamin D. While my pigs, since then they and they're black too, so they they I don't know if that helps with vitamin D, but they definitely get more sunlight and more heat. Maybe it doesn't. Maybe it doesn't affect vitamin D content. But since they're out in the sun all the time, although it rains here most of the time, but since they get more sun, they, they're going to have a lot more vitamin D. And the way animals store vitamin D is in their fat. So when you're eating bacon, you're going to get more vitamin D. Yeah, so it, it's full of nutrients. You should eat more bacon. That's right. Eat bacon. <laughs> So yeah, I've I've been actually having to kind of explore other uh, other diets now that I've kind of did the the whole dramatic weight dropping, and I'm going to start doing more exercises. I've been kind of reintroducing um, certain things in my diet now that it's not so extreme. Um, I'm done with the. I was getting around fifteen, uh, anywhere from a thousand to fifteen hundred calories a day. I mean that's, that's a thousand a at best, a thousand calorie deficit. Yeah. Um, yeah. And which was which was great and all, but I I had to stop because my my you know I, I don't know if you've noticed this, but I'm balding. <laughs> y- yeah. <laughs> but I, it started really kind of intensifying. I had to shave off my my what was left of my goatee because it was already thin, and it would just started thinning out even more. And I was like, oh, I have to shave this off. And uh, then I wow. found out that oh yeah, extreme weight loss will do that. And I was like oh so maybe I had to tone things sure. back a little bit. So I still like I do. I, but I basically do is I keep my diet kind of like how it is, uh, you know, the whole time. You know, kind of eating fruits for breakfast. Uh, you know, a really big salad with no oil. Uh, you know, no meats, nothing. You know, in my lunches, and then for dinner I'll I'll have something. Uh, that's what's the word moderate uh, cons- no sensible i think that's <laughs> that's the right word kind of keeping my fat down keeping the calories down but still you know like i just made pizza before we did the podcast um the homemade pizza where i actually kneaded the dough by hand for 30 minutes you know and then let it sit <laughs> in the refrigerator overnight and you know cut it up and got you know s- cooked it up on a skillet because i don't have a uh was it a pizza stone you know mm. you know making it with with tomatoes and and you know a little bit just a little bit of uh cheese you know and it's good and then on the side you know have have some um either no salt uh you know steamed vegetables on top of that uh yeah and that's been working of uh, i'm not losing weight as fast but it's working and uh the the you know i'm not feeling so lethargic now um 
I got some of that protein shakes for working out, but which, which I haven't incorporated yet because I don't want to just dump a bunch of protein in my system when I'm not working out. That'll make you fat. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so yeah, that's what I'm doing. That's 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 my plan, and I'm just kind of exploring like maybe there's something else I can do because there's been like other was it the paleo diet people have been praising mm-hmm. and the instant you mentioned I'm gonna do one diet. You have all the other like diet cultists coming in and going, right? You're wrong. <laughs> <laughs> Don't do that diet. Do my diet. And then, of course, if you do their diet, you're going to come up with their their other competitors <laughs> doing the same thing. He's right. Yeah. Yeah, it's been interesting because I I'm studying some of these. I'm studying the paleo diet mostly, and I'm not doing like a really in depth study of it. Um, they're but wrong about that, legumes, though. They're wrong about legumes. That it doesn't make I've any wondered, sense. It doesn't make. Any I don't sense. know. I, that, that's like some of it is is kind of bizarre because they're like, no, only eat what cavemen ate. And it's like, well, well, that's no, not what well, cave. The paleo, yeah, the paleo diet is not what cavemen eat. Like it works. It'll it'll work if you're trying to lose weight. The paleo diet will work. Mm-hmm. It's the explanation that's bullshit. Like the diet that I'm doing. If you right. read the guy who wrote it, it was Joel Furman, Furman, whatever. And the guy's the guy's a total, you know, Doctor Oz level, you know, kind of quacky. I, I'm not going to say that because I don't want to get sued, <laughs> but yeah, the reasons he gives are just bull, bull. Yes, and it's terrible, and, and I'm just like, but the diet works, <laughs> you know, like all these diets work. It's the explanations that are just garbage. Go ahead, sorry, sorry to interrupt. I just want to well, make no, sure I, I think <laughs> no problem. I think that you're totally right. So that's been my kind of thing with the paleo diet but uh something i've been getting into recently i I mean it's been a few months six six months i'm going to consider that recently is uh the kind of the whole foods approach and the ancestral diet approach which is very similar to paleo diet you know the paleos are people they're very focused on eating non-processed food and then they also focus really heavily on meat and vegetables but then uh, the whole foods approach is similar, and so is the ancestral diet thing. But you know, kind of, I, I like the ancestral diet approach because they're thinking, okay, what if what were your ancestors eating? Because you have to think that people adapted to different regions, right? You know, only recently have we become globalized to be able to travel to different areas. And but but historically, mm. if you're Eastern European, what were your ancestors eating? That's probably going to be best for you and it's not always going to be true right but like looking at things like well the chinese people are going to be easy they're going to be able to digest rice easier that's so racist and more efficient (laughs) how dare you say that hey i'm supporting chinese supremacy (laughs) so they're, you're they you're, are. you're killing us. You're killing eating. America. And frankly, I don't. I don't. I don't like it. We're going to start a trade war with with Adyak. <laughs> going to be the ultimate pop beef. And frankly, frankly, we're going to get the best people to fight Adyak. <laughs> yeah, but I've the, been the, a the, shill for the. But the big problem Chinese with that is like the, the reason why all those people were thin back in the day was not because of their diet. Well, not well. It was because of their diet. Excuse me, but not what. What kind of food they were eating? It's how much of the food they were eating. A lot of those, like, mm-hmm. poverty is a natural state for human beings. Like, grinding poverty is the natural state for human beings. And it's only because, you know, we have industri- uh, industrialized nations that we're able to, be, to have enough food to be fat. And you, and you can go yeah. back and re- eat any diet you want of your ancestors and still be fat. You know, That's a good point. I think that, I think that is a good point. Yeah. That's why I don't buy but, a lot of the explanations, like the historical arguments for, for, for diets, like the paleos and I guess the ancestral diets and stuff. Sure. Is, you know, you just got to be a little bit sensible at it. Keep your, keep your calories in line. Watch out for carbs because that's a thing. It, you don't, the FDA just like, oh, carbs, just eat a bunch of them. Just, just eat everything. Just mm-hmm. have, have it with bread. Everything, you know, have a bunch of pasta. If you ever look at the pyramid, it's like just eat a bunch of grain and then some other stuff. <laughs> Yeah, no, no, no. That's a great way to be fat. <laughs> yeah, right. And it, I think, yeah, I think you make a really good point that it's that it doesn't. The explanations are bad, right? Because they're not controlling for every variable, right? Yeah. Like, like you said, grinding poverty. People are our lifestyles are very different from our ancestors. So eating the same food is going to probably give us different results than what they had because there are other variables, right? Mm-hmm. And it's the same thing with. Like, uh, there's interesting stuff about, 
bread and eating gluten. Like, what is it? Bread brain? Wheat brain? Wheat belly? I don't remember what it is. But, you know, there's, there's interesting arguments, and I don't really know anything about it. But, you know, people have been eating bread forever. Mm-hmm. Right? It's only now they can afford it every day. Right. And bread used to go bad back in the day because they didn't have refined grains. <laughs> so they, mm-hmm. they you know, the bread only was good for one day. If you could afford it that day, then you could eat it and be happy. And, you know, it was a bunch of calories and carbs. And carbs is like basically slow sugars that lasted throughout the day. So people loved it, you know, when they could get their hands on it. When they could get their hands on it. But, yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you'd have to have the grain harvest, and you'd have to do that pretty much all yourself, yeah. right, for a long time. So, yeah, very different. But I, I, I'll, uh, I'll throw this at you because I, I work with this guy. Not, I, mean, I don't really work with him, but um, we're, we're, in, we're in like a, a, an entrepreneur group together, and I've interviewed him a few times. Kevin Geary of The Rebooted Body. Um, he has a podcast, and he has a program. It's very interesting. My dad's starting it out now. Um, and uh, he's, I like his whole foods thing. Don't eat processed um, grain, or don't, yeah, don't eat processed food at all. And kind of stick away from sugar and uh, and bread and carbs as well. And I, that, that has been, trying to follow some of that basically has been good for me. I mean, I'm, I'm tiny. I don't need to lose weight, right? I probably could use to gain weight but um, some people have really great metabolisms i am not one of right, those people i'm, I'm young and uh, yeah i'm 17 so I, I have a great metabolism so i can i can digest anything i can eat a whole cake and i'll be fine i'll feel sick but um i'll be fine in terms of weight but what i found is that the um, just following that diet and trying to and just stay away from processed foods and as much sugar as possible um has been pretty good on like energy levels and uh and being able to function it seems to me you know i was doing fine when i was eating whatever i wanted but now it's uh yeah i think that there's a difference yeah processed food is is absolutely terrible for you and i think that's probably why i'm starting to feel a little bit better is because i'm not eating Mm -hmm. so much oil and and salt which was basically what what processed food is they take all this great stuff and then they just grind it down with some some like a bunch of different oils and uh salt and there's so much salt in everything. Uh-huh. <laughs> like there's salt in everything. Um, everything has like vast amounts of salt in it. And of course, you know, like you read the things and it's like, oh, it's only got like 12% of my daily intake of salt. But the daily recommended, according to the FDA, is a lot of salt. It's still a lot of salt. It really is. But I don't know. I love salt. Mm-hmm. <laughs> that's a, well, that's, that's delicious, right? It's That's the one thing that like that's. That's the one thing that's been hard about my diet. It's just like, oh, I have to limit salt. Ugh. I could do the fat. I can do all the vegetables because you crave the vegetables after a while. But, you know, it's like, mm-hmm. oh, I got some coarse, uh, kosher salt and I got some sea salt. with. Ugh. I just love different flavors of salt. I have, I've, I'm, you know, I'm a salt tooth. I don't have a sweet tooth. I'm not one of those people that ate candy. I was one of those people that ate pot- potato chips and beef jerky and, and yep. popcorn. And that, that's, that, was my, that was my sin. Yeah, Not, that's that's my thing now. Yeah, is I I can't stand eating too much sugar. Like I'll have uh, I'll have like a, like pastries I can do pretty well because you know a lot of the times pastries have a little bit of salt in them, and like cookies like they have a decent amount of salt and you can taste it right. So I like cookies a lot, but I don't like candy, and uh, I definitely I'm I'm with you there. Potato chips and popcorn are my <laughs> my things. Yeah, uh, bacon. Oh god, that's just salt. Woo-hoo. That's salt meat. Yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, that means like, you got to think about how, like, we were talking about how they make it, right? You know, they just rub it down with salt and put it in a in a right in a cold room. <laughs> right? But it's amazing. Like, I don't know how how that mm-hmm. happens. Like, how what's the magic? This, there's got to be some some science magic that Fat I'm not knowing salt, about. Man. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So, is there anything else you wanted to talk about? Do we cover everything? We got Jerry Johnson, no. Peterson, I think Pod Beef. We got. Uh, what else? Your, your buddy's Farm podcast. What was that again? Yeah. Rebooted Body Podcast? Yeah, Rebooted Body. And then the, what was the other one that I was recommending? Their audio is getting better, so I'm, I'm starting to feel a little um, bit safe talking about it. That was a Newborn, newborn Liber- Libertarians. Yeah, Newborn Libertarians. Uh, I guess she's running for office, some sort of local office under the LP ticket. Oh, yeah? yeah, she's an ANCAP. Um Nice. Give her, I, a, I, give her a while, and she'll she'll finally leave the LP. But I had actually joined the LP. I should probably talk about that for a second before we go. I joined the LP, but not not to um, 
not to kind of get involved in politics, but more kind of get involved with the community. Uh, you know, just, mm-hmm. just knowing more libertarians because I, I don't know. I don't know about you, but I don't really know. I didn't really know libertarians in real life. Uh, and up yeah, until I, recently. Yeah, I don't know many either. There seems that there aren't too many in Oregon, but I don't know. I, I'm I I don't really I say this on my own podcast, but I don't usually talk about it on the fiends. Uh, but I am a dues paying member of the LPO, the okay. Libertarian Party of Oregon, and I'm I'm part of the judicial committee. Um, I wonder what's, I wonder what the benefits are. Is there benefits for paying? <laughs> you it's tax redu- deductible, but since I don't pay taxes, I'm just kind of throwing. I get my money, money back in taxes anyway, so yeah. Right. <laughs> <laughs> so I mean, I so. donate to them. Yeah, I I mean, I don't know how I don't know how long we've been going. I don't if we need to end oh, an hour and nineteen. No, yeah, we're, we're approaching, we can, but we can do whatever. Throw, I don't care. Okay, sure. <laughs> well then, yeah. So, um, I I don't think I got nominated, but they wanted to nominate me to run for some house district here, my own house district, I guess. Hmm. Um, I'm hoping that they didn't do it. Because I just said, well, because I'm not going to win. And they just want to get people on the ballot to say, Libertarian Party is active. You know, yeah. so I was going to let them let him run me. Because I, I actually like my representative a little bit. I mean, he's a he's a Republican, but he's pretty good on a lot of issues. I guess you kind of have to be. Like a lot of I – mean, I was listening to CNN. They were talking about how like all these f- uh, fiscally conservative, socially liberal uh, – people you know they're they're kind of homeless like no they're not they're they're if, if they actually do get elected in in blue states you know uh mm-hmm. you know as the or blue states and red states as the other party you know because that's the only way you can win you know in new ham in no, no new hampshire excuse me in new mexico is if you as a republican is to be a libertarian and you know the only way you can kind of win as a democrat in, in a in a red state is if you're a little bit more libertarian so like Mike Ravel, which Mike Ravel is terrible, but, <laughs> I, don't, but I, yeah, I, don't, I don't know who that is. He's, he's libertarian-ish when he's not, you know, talking at Holocaust <laughs> denier events, mm. but yeah, it's another thing. Anyways, so yeah, I think that's that's about it. So, man, nice talking to you again. It's been a while. Um, yeah. And then next time we're going to have to do uh, another ball brief. Like, we're not going to do it this month. Because, or we're going to do it this month, but not today because it's the 31st. I eat my way out of this one this month. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Yep, bye. Are you sick of government lackeys who say you didn't build that? Are you tired of elitists like Barack Obama and Al Gore taking credit for the web while trying to take over the web? Are you disgusted by experts whose concept of the internet is that it's a series of tubes? Take back the free market of computing by encouraging software developers to adopt the BIPCOT no-gov license. The BIPCOT no-gov license allows any use or modification except by governments. Go to BIPCOT.org. That's Bravo, India, Papa, Charlie, Oscar, Tango, dot org. For some reason in in this country, and in a bunch of Western world, it's okay to just judge. Hey, this is Michael Dean from the Freedom Fiends Radio Show. Computer programmer Derek Slopey and I have created Fiend Phone. I'm using Fiend Phone right now to talk with and record one of my co-hosts in real time. Take it, Davi. Hey, this is Davi Barker, and I'm a thousand miles away from Michael, but we sound like we're in the same room. We sure do, Davi. So, Davi, please tell the nice people more about Fiend Phone. Fiend Phone is free, no-gov software that opens up a global world of possibilities for collaborative, high-quality, remote voice media production, and I'm digging it. People can try FiendPhone right now at FiendPhone.com. But we're also raising money to vastly improve FiendPhone and vastly improve independent talk media worldwide. So go to FiendPhone.com to help out. Who will build the audio roads? We will, with your help. That's FiendPhone.com. F-E-E-N-P-H-O-N-E.com. Foxtrot, Echo, Echo, November, Phone.com. FiendPhone. I never knew remote audio could be this good.